The car in which I had taken driver's training at school had an automatic transmission, but my mother's Plymouth Valiant had a clutch pedal and a gear shift, both of which I found surprisingly difficult to master. Once I got my learner's permit, I was glad that she was willing to teach me how to shift gears because I sure didn't want to ask my stepfather for help. My mother was far more approachable and did her best to bolster my confidence behind the wheel. No matter where I wanted to drive, she was always happy to ride along. She complimented me on my driving ability, but I told her I was nervous about getting my license. I didn't worry much about the written test. I had studied the California Motor Vehicle Code, and I usually did well with multiple choice tests. But the idea of getting behind the wheel with an examiner from the Department of Motor Vehicles made me nervous. My mother had an idea that a trial run would help me prepare for the road test, and she knew just the person who could help with that. Her brother, Ben. My uncle had become a DMV examiner after retiring from the Air Force, and it was now his job to give road tests. She said nothing to me about her plan until one Saturday a couple of weeks later when Uncle Ben and Aunt Sarah drove over from Riverside to visit. I loved listening to my Aunt Sarah talk as she had one of the most interesting conversational styles I had ever heard. She talked a mile a minute, and she amazed me with her ability to make herself the subject of every conversation. Those attempting to engage with her were more like hijacked listeners than conversation partners, as she was skilled in wrestling the topic back from anyone attempting to change the subject. I thought of her as a conversation pirate. Any comment or story someone else might begin seemed to remind her of another anecdote from her own life. She had cultivated the ability to take a quick breath in unexpected places, not at the punctuation marks, but right in the middle of her sentences, which made it very difficult for anybody else to talk. As she sat in our kitchen on this particular Saturday, Sarah engaged in her favorite pastime, holding court. While my mother shook chicken pieces in flour, preparing them for the frying pan, Sarah chattered on and on. When I first walked in and took a seat at the table, Sarah greeted me with a hug and asked me what I had been up to. I'll be getting my driver's license soon, I told her. Well. Having tossed out a topic, I watched as Sarah ran with it. She told us about learning to drive in Tennessee before the war. Then she told us about the new car she wanted Ben to buy her. She complained about how bad freeway traffic had been on the drive from Riverside. Then she launched into a story about having ridden with a group of women from her church to a recent concert. There were five of them, and they wanted me to sit in the back seat, my Aunt Sarah said. Well, I told them that riding the hump gives me a migraine, and I insisted that... You mean a tummy tickler, I asked, boldly interrupting her. Tummy tickler, said my aunt, taking a sip from her Coke. What in the world are you talking about? That's a dip in the highway, I told her. Driving over one of those always tickles my tummy. Lord, no, Ronnie. I meant the, the hump that runs through the floor of the car. Oh, what do, you, what do you call it? It's not the axle. It runs to the, back to the rear wheels. It was rare that my Aunt Sarah didn't have the right word on the tip of her tongue. Ben, she called. Uncle Ben was sitting in the living room talking with my stepfather. Over the years, he had learned to ignore all but Sarah's most persistent interjections. Ben, she called again. Benjamin, are you listening to me? Still no answer. Ben, what do you want, Sarah? He called back in his slow southern drawl. 
Ben, what do you call that metal rod that runs under the hump in the back seat of the car? It's the drive shaft, Sarah. That's it, Ronnie, the drive shaft. If I don't sit with both my feet together on the floor, I get a bad headache. B, Sarah said, turning her attention to my mother at the counter. Don't toss out the gizzard. I'm frying it up with the rest of the chicken, my mother said, but you'll have to arm wrestle Ben to see who gets it. I was never sure if her family's love of gizzards was due to their having raised chickens in East Tennessee or having grown up during the Great Depression when every scrap of meat was utilized. My grandmother had taught every one of her children, including Ben and Eugene, how to catch, kill, pluck, and cut up a chicken for dinner while she entertained the preacher after church on Sunday. Benjamin, my mother said, will you ride along with Ronnie? He's going to drive up to the grocery store for me before dinner. He has his learner's permit, but needs a licensed driver with him. A few minutes later, my uncle and I were heading down Royal Avenue in my mother's car. I pulled into the left-hand turn lane at Erringer Road and waited for oncoming traffic to clear. There were a lot of cars on the road, and I was nervous waiting to make the turn. When the signal flashed yellow, I let my foot off the clutch too quickly, and the car stalled in the intersection. I quickly depressed the clutch and twisted the key in the ignition. The traffic signal turned red several seconds before I completed the turn. Ronnie, my uncle said, I would have failed you for that if you had been taking a road test.